Hi, I am Emily McAllister Goldsmith, and this is a video recording for English 107 um, for all of the sections. So today we're gonna to be talking about poetry, um, a brief introduction, and then more specifically about free verse poetry. So what is poetry? On a really basic level, poetry comes from an origin Greek word that just means to make or to create. So you could simply say that anytime you make or create anything, you are creating poetry. And I think that's an important distinction to start with because poetry is one of those things that can feel really overwhelming for people, especially because what we study in high school um, is usually stuff like Shakespearean poetry, or maybe you read Edgar Allan Poe, etc. And you get this idea that poetry is formal, specific, role-based, and even sophisticated. And sometimes there are people perpetrating those ideas that poetry is exclusive um, or higher than you, but that's not the case. Poetry is accessible and it is for everyone, especially with what a lot of modern poets are writing today and with ever expanding definitions, what poetry is and what modern poems look like, um, that inclusivity is growing bit by bit. So um, just to start with, Poetry is for you and made for you to consume. Um, and although some of it historically is very sophisticated, formal, exclusive, um, a lot of modern poets are changing the way that we think about poetry. So, um, on a base level, poetry is the art of language. Um, from this book, Poetic Meter and Poetic Form by Turco, um, Turco makes some specific distinctions about poetry. And what they're saying is that poetry considers form, meter, and prose. So there are lots of poetic forms. Most of them are traditional or historic and they belong to our past, but there are a lot of current poets creating their own forms, which is a really interesting thing that's happening. But some traditional forms would be like the sonnet, which is those 14 lines that maybe you've heard of from your high school classroom. Um, some other formal poems might be sestinas or villanelles. A haiku, for example, is a form. Um, so there are all of these kinds of forms um, that poetry exists in. And that is typically what we think of when we think of formal, or traditional poems. We're thinking about a specific kind of form that often includes a rhyme scheme or a specific meter or a syllabic count. And that's where meter comes in. So meter is like numbers. It's counting your syllables or emphasizing certain syllables. So an example of that would be like ambic pentameter, um, which you can find in a Shakespearean sonnet where you have specific emphasis on words on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, right? And then there's regularity even in how many syllables belong to each line. So an iambic pentameter, that's 10. Um, and there's all different kinds of combinations that have this specific count of syllables per line, and then even a specific kind of emphasis on where the stress goes in the syllable. So that's your meter. And then prose is thinking about organizing the poem according to the balance of sentences. So when we think about prose poetry, we often think about longer lines um, or more grammatically regulated lines, for example. And then you have free verse. And free verse is what we're gonna be mostly focusing on today. And then also the poem that you have due next Friday is a free verse poem. So on a really simple note, free verse is non-metered, right? So there's no meter, there's no syllabic count, and free verse poetry is way closer to real speech, how we actually talk today. So um, in this book, The Book of Forms, also by Turco, um, this says, Free verse designates the modern style. So in here, there's a quote from D.H. Lawrence that says, there's no use inventing fancy laws for free verse. And that is true. But there are some kind of 
non-official rules for free verse poems. Like, there's some established texture with no metrical regularity, so you're not measuring it. Um, and many free verse poems totally avoid rhyme. Many free verse poems abandon traditional grammar and punctuation. They might use syllables like an equal sign or an ampersand, your fun and sign. Um, many free verse poems can have short lines or non-regulated line length, for example, and then they might play with white space in a way that is different. So although these, although these are not official rules for free verse, as free verse has no rules, <coughs> these are common things that you do end up seeing happening in free verse poems. So I like to think of free verse as the ghost of form. So free verse is not uh, just random words typed on a page uh, really sporadically with no thought and no intention and then you turn it in and you say this is a poem. Usually there's some kind of intention or purpose, right? So um, even though the reader might not know exactly what's happening on the page, especially in abstract poetry, uh, the author is doing something on the page, right? And free verse poems do often include um, purposeful um, devices like the use of sound. So this could be where you use alliteration, assonance or consonance, which is the repetition of sound, and maybe there is some rhyme. Um, like I said before, most free verse poems avoid rhyme, but you might have some internal rhymes or some like near or slanted rhymes happening so that while you're reading the poem, you are noticing some kind of repetition of sound. Um, the line is really important to all poems, including free verse poems. The line is not a substitute for the sentence. It's more like in addition to it. And in a free verse poem, you might not be using exact grammatical sentences. You might more be using phrases. Um, but the line is how you're breaking up those thoughts as you go through. And it's purposeful. So you are directing the breath and the rhythm and how you break your lines down might alter the meaning or add stress. So this is where something called enjambment comes in, which is running on of the sense from one line to another. So that could be literally that you take one sentence and break it in half. And so the two lines fall next to each other, or it could be one thought that is in an exact sentence that you're bringing down that might read as two separate thoughts when they're lined up in your poem, but when you read them back to back, it could create one new thought. And then that way that provides you with more than one kind of reading as you go. And that's a device that a poem might use to give you some depth um, into what they're saying. There is this word called a caesura, um, and that is a pause that occurs within the line. So you can mark that by like an M dash, a slant, two of those straight lines, I don't know what they're called. Um, you can also mark that with like a bunch of spaces in between your words, but that's a forced pause as you're reading inside the line without line breaking down. And a caesura is also one of those devices that you might use to um, communicate something, stop a reader in their tracks, or give them a double meaning. And then lastly, voice is really important. So just like we talked about with short stories and an essay, your writer's voice is important. It's the way that you're using language and diction to communicate with your reader, and it's totally unique to you. And it's the same thing in poetry um, with this added marker that you might be using a persona. So in persona poetry, you are usually still using the first person I, but you're not yourself you are embodying the persona of someone else. And that allows for a unique point of view switch to happen. So when we talk about a poem, I, Emily, might be the author of that poem, but the voice in that poem, the first person I, might not be me, Emily, it might be the speaker, someone else. So I might choose to do that if I'm recounting some historical tale 
or if I want to dive into a different perspective in my own family unit, I might persona someone else. So when we talk about poetry, this is why sometimes you might hear people say, oh, the speaker is saying this or thinking or feeling this and not the author. That's that distinction there. But your unique author's voice is the point of view and the diction and the language uh, in the poem. And that is really important. It's totally unique to you. And usually that's also what makes a poem really interesting and enjoyable for a reader is when there is a unique author's voice. And then we've talked about formal versus informal, like the traditional, those specific forms, haikus, sustinas, sonnets, etc. And then this more, I'm saying non-traditional, although people have been writing free verse poems for quite a while now. Um, but this is kind of the age of modern po poems. We're seeing more free verse poems happening and less of those traditional forms, unless people are creating their own forms, which is also happening. So um, you are going to be writing a free verse, do next, a free verse poem, do next Friday, and we are asking for 20 lines, but you get to break up those lines however you see fit, and you get to pick your own topic, of course. So you can choose to write in first person as yourself, or in first person as a persona, someone else, or you can write in third person, he, she, they, them, it's totally up to you. Um, we are looking for some kind of intention. So you can decide what is it that you want to explore or think about or communicate in your poem. And like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to make sense because lots of poetry can be abstract, but we do want to see some author's voice, some concrete detail, just like what we talked about in short stories and in essays. We want to see images and details that we can taste, touch, see, smell, hear, um, and then also we do want to see um, some maybe theme or mood or tone, just something indicating that you're thinking about all the things that we've learned this semester and you're applying them to the poem. So before we conclude our virtual time together, I'm going to read you one poem that is a free verse poem called Dear Adam by Eileen Miles, and then I'm going to link three poems um, in the YouTube text body, but then also on your Canvas page, you'll have these links to these if you want to read them. Um, this way you're getting a wide variety of perspectives and um, diverse voices. And if you want to read these additional three poems on your own time, you can do so. And then of course, as always, feel free to email me if you have any questions. So I'm going to read this poem. Um, Dear Adam, I said cake. I said top hat. I said microphone, four little golden baby heads, wait, I said pirate ghost, wait, wait, I said closed eye smiling cat, he scrawled back, oh my god, I thought, fuck yeah, I can read this at the marathon, he said, Eileen smiles, eh, I can use it, the bell of my computer rang, same message, wait, the cat is crying with relief, the cat is a devil now. The cat is not mad. The cat making racialized jazz, uh, or not my white hands. I'm talking to everyone now, and I'm using a filter. No, I'm not. I acknowledge that there is an image of me twice. I only recently learned the term jazz hands. If we fucked Pennsylvania up, what is our hope to live in a stolen country that was always stolen and worked largely by stolen people? Out of a conservative diaspora came I, mongrel poet from Massachusetts, to make my mark. Love and these things and opportunities to speak. We can't fall down, we team in the new opportunity. We discover what resistance means, our time and blowing up the inside of my computer. Buck studies, the phone says delivered, what is? Adam says, did you see my beard? We talk about money a while. I ride my bike, get off the phone, goes ding. It's his beard calling. I go, oh, you have what I want. He says, LOL, then skull, then rocket, then turkey, green pistol, and a flame. I don't know what to say back to that. I say, bike and go. All right, so um, thanks for paying attention. 
there's gonna be just a super quick response for you to do on Canvas. And also, like I said, I link some extra poems if you wanna read them or check them out in your own time. And I hope that you guys are doing okay. If you have any concerns, or if you feel like you can't finish the assignments in time or you're overwhelmed, please email me so that we can um, make it an extension plan for you, etc. Bye.